Let me ask you a question. What farm pops into your mind when I say mega automatic iron farm that produces over 2,000 iron per hour? Probably not a basic iron farm that looks something like this. But more along the lines of what I just built, an eight village stackable farm that produces over 2,000 iron ingots per hour. And it looks incredible. And it also took like half a day to build. But what if I asked you the same question, but for a gold farm that produces over 300 gold blocks per hour, you would probably imagine one of these insane designs with tons of magma blocks that takes way too much time to build. What if I told you I have a farm that takes one hour to build and is better Better than 90% of all gold farms out there. Now in this hardcore world, I've been trying to do everything bigger and better because it looks cooler. And honestly, it feels really awesome when you complete a really massive build, but I'm dead broke on gold and I need a lot for an upcoming project. And there's really no point in spending like 30 hours working on a build. If at the end of the day, there's a cheaper resource build that's more efficient and takes up less space in the nether. So that's exactly what we're doing today, building our ourselves the most efficient gold farm out there but before we do that i want to expand upon our little lay house over there and i was thinking we're over like 400 days into this world and we still do not have any sort of like pet or dog so really quickly i'm going to see if i can fly around tame a dog and then build him a little dog house right by the lay house and then i think we also have a horse that maybe in the next episode we can end up uh building a little horse stable over there for him <gasps> No way! Dog! Let's go, dude! Oh, dude, it was meant to be! It only took one bone! And we've got some bees over here, so this is... Okay, we'll probably end up needing a honey farm in the future for some, like, really advanced builds, but today's build, not advanced. Yo, dog, I think if I just fly away, since he's not sat on the ground, he should just teleport to me when I land over here in my house. Okay, well, I landed and I don't see him. We do have a horse though, my boy Fishy. I do remember him. Nah, bro, my, do my dog just forgot to come over here. Dude, he's just vibing. All right, wait, is it you? No, is it you? Yeah, it's you. Come on, we got somewhere to go. Oh, I mean, yeah, they teleport. Like dogs still, I, I don't know why. Maybe you can't fly. Maybe you just have to walk or run all the way over uh, to, to wherever you want to go. And I was thinking... We can just put the dog house like right about here. Yo, you wanna boom. And then I'm terrible with coming up with pet names. So I'm just gonna really quickly hit a, a, a pet name generator. Oh, I don't like that. Teddy? Ah, I, I feel like my dog's like Q-Ball? Dude, Quentin, that's actually, I'm not gonna like, Quentin's actually a pretty hard name. Reminds me of like a 70s mob boss. Like, hey, yo, Quentin, come over here. I mean, I guess like Quentin Tarantino, I don't know. Oh, my boy, Quentin. Oh, there goes the uh, anvil. But good thing we have this iron farmer here. And honestly, I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the iron farm being so close to the base. But the good thing is is pretty much always going to be running. So that's like a plus and a minus that it's just always in the distance, which is why I made it look, you know, I think I, it turned out really great. And that's why I put so much effort into it. Cause I was like, bro, it's gonna be right by my base. Can't have it look all crappy. All right, Quentin, what's good? Let's get your little house built. All right, I'm just thinking something super basic, super small, kind of like a beach house. Uh, I don't know, like vibe. Obviously it's just all for show. Same thing with this, like I'm not making, I know there's, I think YouTuber who made like a whole city for a lake. I was like, bro, these guys, they don't even, they're just vibing. Same with my dog. My boy Quinn just vibing. I, I need to make him something small, nice, and relaxing. You know, I mean, it's it's small, but listen, dogs are small. I'm not making it, I'm not, listen, listen, Quinn, he's the homie. He's the man. I'm not, I'm not building him a mansion. Dude, I still have the same house I built on day like 50 of this world, and this dude is not getting a better house than I am. Also, come on, buddy. You gotta get out of the rain. All right, there you go. Quentin's humble. It's very humble. All right, this is a very, very humble abode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Let's see. We'll probably come back and revamp and revisit this, but listen, we got bigger and better things to do. And actually, one of those things is, I think like every project I've done has like added to the like look or feel of my base. And since we're doing this project in the nether, I had the idea to transform this area into like a coral reef kind of biome-ish field. The water won't be coral reef water, like you can't change the color of the water because that's linked to the biome, but it's just kind of drab. There's a lot of mixed materials. You got diorite, gravel, dirt, sand, not a huge fan. So I think I'm gonna replace 
uh all of like the blocks that are on the ground from like here up to sand and then maybe change some of this to sand so we're gonna obviously leave this we can't transfer the whole thing uh but i do definitely want to make this area all the way over here to pretty much the opening of this sort of a coral reef uh because i love the biome love the colors and i feel like it really add a lot and make this pop because it just looks super drab and bland all right, now I have no clue how big of a project this is gonna be. I feel like it might be kind of a low-key big project, but I'm not really gonna know until I just start placing down sand. That's the main thing. So anywhere there's stone, I'm putting sandstone, or anywhere there's just, you know, gravel, dirt, just gonna put regular sand, so... Yeah, let's see. All right, well, this took me 20 minutes to get this whole place sanded out. And uh, obviously the surface would be really easy to change. It's just the blocks underwater that are kind of a pain because it is sand and sand falls and that's really annoying to deal with. But I really like how it turned out, especially uh, using the sandstone down there. I really like that. But now we have a slightly bigger area to do. Uh, but I hope that most of it's flat since it's flat. It, it won't take up too much time because I think it's... Like, a lot of this being vertical and the sand falling was, was what was taking that most time. But we'll, we'll see. Either way, I'm pushing through. I've committed to this. I think it's going to be a dope idea. And listen, I'm not going to lie. I got to make up for the doghouse looking like, <laughs> like that, okay? All right, some more sand place. It is coming along. It's a lot. We got a lot. I think really what's going to transform this is all of the sandstone. Like, yeah, all this sand up here is cool. But the vast majority of blocks are going to have to be down there is sandstone. And it's going to be a... Pain, I imagine, but I really think we'll cover probably up to like right here. So basically, the only way you're gonna be able to see is if you like come down here and swim. Which I have never even been down here before. So once again, we we got a ways to go, but it's it's coming along. Yeah, like I said, it'll be worth it. Hardcore is really about doing projects you don't have to do, but because it looks cool, you're gonna do it anyways. Okay, just realize it's been an hour, and it feels like I've done. So I've done something, but it feels like I've done nothing. Maybe it's just because there's still so much, like, gray. And, like, there's some parts I can't do yet because I need to put in, like, the, the sandstone. I'm like, that's a full stack of sand down there. And you wouldn't think that's a full stack of sand, but that's a full stack of sand. There, bro. Wait, how is this sand floating? That's a great way. How, how is this sand floating? I actually have no clue. Maybe did I not place that? Dude, I don't know. I'm tripping. I don't know. Good thing this gold farm won't take too long to build. Or at least it, I, I hope it doesn't. Wait. Can I chuck on haste too? I'm pretty sure my beacon reaches me down there. If I can chuck on haste too, that'll make this... Oh, bro. I have four diamonds. Bro, I, I gotta go mining soon. Four diamonds is just unacceptable. Oh my gosh. What? Okay. I low-key thought I was gonna be insta mining down here with haste too, but I guess not. All right. I had the bright realization that instead of... I, literally, this is what I was doing. I would mine up a block... And I place down the sand. I can just place over the block with the sand. And um, it's going a little bit faster now. Yeah, don't don't ask me why. I thought I wanted to like retain the exact shape. We still do. It's like, I, I can definitely clean that area a bit. Like some areas I'll probably go back and clean up. Like it looks fine for the most part. But yeah, that is three shulker boxes of sand and sandstone placed. And we're, I, we're almost there. I feel like two more shulker boxes maybe of, of, of sand. Stanton. Maybe. Maybe three. Well, some excruciating time later, we have transformed this entire area into a sand mix of sandstone. Oh, I forgot one spot. Okay, there we go. But now it is primed to be filled with tons of coral reef. Uh, definitely need to add some seagrass back in there as well. And I would like to add some tropical fish, but I don't know if they'll even stay in this area. They might just swim out. So if you guys know if they stay in an area, let me know. And I can definitely come back and add some tropical fish. But yeah, we've got a lot of coral reef to collect and slap in here. I really feel like the Minecraft, I think it was the 1.15 update. That was the C update. Like, bro, is underappreciated. This is one of the coolest, if not like the sickest looking biomes in Minecraft. So I'm trying to just get as many things i can I'm trying to get a bunch of coral fans and then blocks i forgot to bring shulker boxes but if we get a stack of like everything that we can carry then we should be good enough to fill up the biome back at the base i really don't think it'll be too much because these coral reefs are like super densely packed and i don't think i'm gonna make mine as densely packed but uh we'll see and oh no how long is this 
Oh, dude. I remember that. Dude, that's how I... Okay, we're not grabbing another push of this. Actually, brother, you can go back because I am not risking my life again. I've done this before. We're not doing it again. I just wanted to grab some tropical fish because like, while we're here, I might as well see if they actually stay. Let's see. Oh, these guys are... Whoa. I've never seen pink and blue fish before. And then we're gonna name we're gonna name them so they don't despawn. I think they despawn. I don't know. I've tried to have fish before at my base, and then it always like works out terribly. But we have a ton of different coral reef blocks we could use. And you really can't go wrong because the coral reefs themselves are just kind of like randomly slapped in there. So shouldn't be too much longer until we are finally on our way whipping up at this gold farm. Alright, we're gonna name this fella Larry, this fella Barry, and this fella. Terry. Like I said, I'm terrible at pet names. Barry. Larry. Terry. Welcome to the base. All right. Let's make some coral reefs. Well, we ran out of seagrass, which I mean, that's fine. We're also running really low on coral, which I'm kind of shocked by. Like, I didn't think I would need this much coral. So we might be able to make a second trip out. I'd rather have too many coral than not enough in my coral reef pond. I spent like three hours placing sand. So, what's an extra, like, 20 minutes to grab it some more coral? Yo, my man wants to come check out the, the spot. Oh, he's selling coral blocks. But three emeralds? Bro, that's up, dude. That's highway robbery. We got all the seagrass in place, though, and it really does add a lot. Like, this was super barren. And yes, I will replace that. But it really just, like, starts adding a lot of texture. So, we're gonna have to go grab, like way more than i originally thought but we'll use up what we have real quick i'm not gonna lie it's a lot more exhausting making coral reefs than i thought of because each one has to be like different but still look like coral reefs. you can see i've done a, quite a few over there and i don't know if i'm getting the vibe i'm going for i think like real coral reefs are just so jam-packed with the actual like coral reefs themselves that it just looks genuinely sick but if i want to do that i don't even know how many different coral reefs i'd have to make in order for that to actually come to fruition so we're really just kind of trying to populate the area here with the different coral blocks that we have and then i'll of course go back and uh use all of the coral fans and whatnot i'm just kind of trying to use up the last little bit here uh and then i don't want to make too many coral reefs down at the bottom because it feels like i'm only going to really see the ones at the top i was trying to get a quick bird's eye view of place on all the coral blocks and okay from up top it, it looks pretty sick i think if you like take a really close look at you like wait that's not a coral reef biome but listen it, it, i did the best i could you know this isn't a coral reef biome transformation episode i just did this willy-nilly because i felt bad i wasn't gonna be doing anything at my base so now it's time to basically just spam like literally in coral reefs like things are just randomly placed all over the place so that's kind of the model we're going for here dude i forgot the best part the sea pickles man how to honestly I think I might just... Oh, no, that looks terrible. I think I might just litter the coastline with sea pickles, bro, because sea pickles are freaking elite. Like it's a pickle that belongs in the sea. That's what I'm talking about. Well, regardless, this area got a huge glow up. It's no longer this ugly, weird ditch in the ground. It's been transformed into a beautiful oasis. But now for the meat and potatoes of the video, the gold farm. Now, once again, there's a ton of other huge, massive, fancy, elaborate gold farms you can build. And I will give those farms credit that those are all pretty much automatic. You just sit there, you let a wolf kill the mobs or something else kill the mobs. However, this one is not a case. That's probably the only downside, but literally the only resource I have to collect is a stack of obsidian and the farm is done. Like every other one of these farms, you have to mine up like 20,000 magma blocks and you're running through pickaxes and farming magma blocks that many is just so annoying. And so I guess I'm just kind of making this farm to show you guys bigger isn't always better. And that with a little bit of research, you can usually end up saving yourself a ton of time by building the right farm for you rather than just copying what you saw your favorite YouTuber build online. All right, I think I might've said that I wanted to time myself building this. And if I didn't, well then that's my bad because I want to time myself and see how 
fast I can build this farm. And I forgot to start the timer, so I'm assuming I've just been doing work for about 10 minutes. And the reason this farm is so easy to build is rather than placing a bunch of blocks, you're really just destroying a bunch of blocks. We have one more layer right above here uh, that we're going to need to destroy. And it is a two chunk by two chunk area, so 32 by 32. And since it's netherrack, I think all you need is like an efficiency two or three uh, diamond pickaxe and you can insta mine netherrack. And so once again, rather than have to do a bunch of complicated placements of magma in specific order in the obsidian, there's just one portal, which you guys saw, I think one turtle egg, a few trap doors. And for the most part, that's the farm. All righty, we're just putting in the trap doors because if any regular piglin spawn up here, I didn't actually know this, but piglins are actually like scared of zombie pigment. So they run away and then they'll run into these corners over here and then they'll actually despawn. So I also got to give a massive shout out to the creator of this farm, uh, Ian X04. I've made plenty of his designs in the past for different worlds, different builds. And never once have I had a single problem and all the farms end up working great. So his channel will be linked down below in the description. And honestly, guys, there's so many useful farms on their channel that you could probably find at least one that will apply to your world. And once again, it's we're, we're like 15 minutes in and we're over halfway done already, which is insane. And boom, 16 minutes in, we have the spawning area complete. As you can see, zombie pigmen are already getting attracted to the egg. We haven't activated this portal just yet. And the way Minecraft works is if a player doesn't go through a portal, that it's not actually active. So we still have to build the overworld area. And then the most important part, I would say, which is actually getting on top of the nether. And man, no, many how, no matter how many times I do that, it's always sketch. Because if you get up here and you don't have a way to get back down, this is hardcore. World's gone. All right, but really quickly, we're going to try to break some bedrock real quick. And if we could do this... Oh, nice, man. Didn't work at all. <laughs> okay, we've got one more attempt. If this doesn't work, that's fine because I have other means to get back to the overworld. But man, it's, I, 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 I think I just forgot to bring the right block. So maybe this will work with obsidian. I really hope it does. Uh, but we should just be able to get ourselves under here. Open up the trap door. Do this. And then hold... The G, it placed, please. Oh, dude. Bro, I used to be so good at that. I actually don't know what happened. Like, it didn't break at all. Uh, so that's not fun. This piece of bedrock, we will break it before the video's over. This stubborn piece of bedrock. I'm gonna put a little trap door right here. I think it's because I only had netherrack and obsidian and that might be like a weird block to use. But anyways, let's wrap up the rest of the farm. All right, we are almost done. I did forget I was smelting like six stacks of glass. Okay, I was wondering where this portal is gonna spawn. We're pretty high up here, okay. Don't think I've ever had a portal spawn at the top of the world, bro. Looking like the earth up here, it's all, it looks like curved. All right, we are wrapping up the stuff over here in the overworld. Basically, the zombie pigmen that spawn, they're gonna go through the portal you guys originally saw just a few minutes ago uh, where the turtle egg is, and then they are going to be transported to this portal right here once we light it, and then they are going to slowly shuffle their way over here uh, into the point where they walk into this portal and then they are teleported to the killing chamber. Uh, how does this work? I've got no clue. I hate nether portals and trying to line this stuff up because I spawned all the way up there and I don't know if that's right. Not entirely sure what's going on with that, but I think I've done everything else right. And if I have, we should want to light these portals, go back and then just see the zombie pigment flow in. All right, so we light the portals. We can use either one to get out. And then I think it's just started. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's correct. We get the nice hop out. Now I did make a bunch of glass and I forgot it. So that's my bad. But if we just stand here and vibe, we should be getting maximal spawn rates. And then usually like after a minute or so, the zombie pigment will start flowing in here. Oh, has it started? I believe it has started. Oh yes, the gold farm is working. Stop the timer. 38 minutes to make this bad boy, bro. They are literally so many zombie pigmen. Look at that. It is entity cramming. They cannot stop coming through the portal. And uh, we're in business. So there's also doubles as a great XP farm. The only downside is since this is such a compact, small farm, 
you have to craft all of your gold manually. So any drops that I get, any gold nuggets, uh, I basically just have to run over here, craft them to gold ingots, and then craft them into gold blocks. But uh, we definitely do need to do a little bit of revamping here because this looks terrible. So I'm going to head back to the overworld. We are going to go ahead, uh, make this place look a little bit nicer. What? Bro. Where am I now? Dude, a mine shaft in... I mean, this looks sick. I'm not going to lie. This is a... For, for weird spawns from nether portals, it's definitely one of the cooler ones I've ever got in my lifetime. But bro, I'm down at negative 35. Why? Like what? Who's making these spawns, my man? And I wanted to break the bedrock so that I don't have to go through this portal and have to do this whole roundabout way to get back to my base every time. So we're going to get some more supplies to break the bedrock while we're at our base. And we are back. So it is this block. I was right in assuming that. We just, it just didn't work the first time. All right. Take three, I think this is. You flick the lever, and you hold down the button. It plays. Yes, there we go. I use, I've been using this method for the longest time, and I tried a new one, didn't work very well. And uh, boom, there it goes. So we have access right back down to the farm, and I'll probably end up making a much bigger hole in the bedrock in the future, just because it is very convenient to be able to just fly up here uh, you know, let's say with an elytra or something. And then the real way to use this farm is you put everything in your inventory up. Probably keep some food, but put it all in this chest. And then you grab some gold nuggets and you just litter your inventory with them. So that's the, so it makes it gold nuggets are like the only thing you can pick up. And then you put one stack of gold ingots there. And then you're swiping away. And this thing doesn't actually have sweeping edge three. So it's kind of a, it has looting three which is good but we need sweeping edge to make this like the ultimate looting mob sword but i'm gonna do a quick 10 minute afk test because i have a flight to catch in a little bit and i really don't want to miss it just because i'm trying to use this farm all right let's see what we end up at 42 gold blocks in 10 minutes and bro that cannot be good like uh, like not jokingly that cannot be good. We're gonna grab all of my stuff back from the inventory. Make sure you don't forget the shulkers. Yo, what are you doing, my man? You got scared away, so you just ran up here instead. But hope you guys ended up enjoying today's video. As always, if you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode of this series, and I'll make sure to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.